In this movie, we'll continue our look into how to use the brushes for your project for anime. I've created a character here, and if you have access to the exercise files, you can open Lesson 0410, that's Section 4, Lesson 10, and then the file named Brushes 2. This character has been created on a single layer. Let me click and activate our Layers palette. The character is actually on Layer 1, and if I hide it by clicking the little eyes there on the Layer Indicator, you see the character disappear. Layer 2 is where we're going to draw our hair. And one of the reasons I've got this on a separate layer is simply so I can work independently of the actual character and not worry about selecting any of the objects on that layer. It's always a little bit of a toss-up when you work on your scene. And I shouldn't say a toss-up, but you do need to make some decisions based on where you would like or how you would like to manage your scene. Having multiple shapes on one layer is always good. You can select them and work without flipping back and forth, but there are times when it is actually an inconvenience. So it's really project specific and we'll get into that as we deal with animation on those projects. Well, let's start creating our hair. I'll select the freehand tool. I'm on layer two. Freehand tool is a little pencil and keyboard shortcut for that is F, which I'll press now. I'm going to just draw some hair, some big hair. We'll go around the ear, cover up part of that, do a little bit of the temple, and then come up around the eyes. It will auto weld back at the starting point, and we have our basic hair right there. At this point, I could adjust it, the shape, or anything I wanted to. Don't really want to at this point. But what I do want to do is fill it with the color. Right now, there is no shape for the interior designated. So in order to do that, I need to come over to my fill area on my tools palette and press keyboard shortcut U or click the Create Shape tool. We get that checkerboard pattern letting us know that the shape has now been designated. It's now active, so let's go ahead and play with that a little bit. I would like to give this hair kind of a black feel, kind of a black fro feel. So I'm actually going to do a, a standard uh, cartoon trick here, and that is to add a little bit of blue, but I'm going to do it with an effect and a gradient. I'll come down to gradient. We get a little modal dialog box that pops up here. And we have the options of changing the direction of the gradient. I'll leave it about at 270 where it was. We also have the option to convert this to a radial gradient if we would like. That's where the light part starts in the center and it graduates out, but I would like to leave this as a linear gradient. But I do want to change this white color to something that's fairly dark, but has a blue cast to it. Let me pull up our color picker to see a little bit better. And we'll come over to something a little bit like that and select OK. We'll validate that. And now to make this happen here, I need to actually press the space bar. So I'll do that, and you'll look and think, wow, um, looks like the hair is still white. What's going on with that? Well, despite having all these high display settings set in here for brushes and fills, anti-aliasing, you can't preview gradients without actually rendering that frame to see what it looks like. So if you'd like to see the gradient here, what you need to do is actually come up to File, Render, on the Apple, it's Command-R. On the PC, it will be Control-R. And this doesn't render your whole animation. It only does a single frame. So I'll enable that. And that renders down there. We'll pull it up, and we can see now that we've got a fill. But wait, we haven't really applied a brush yet. Well, let's go ahead and do that. I'll close this. We'll come back to our Q tool, the Shape Select tool. We've selected that. And now let's add a brush. And let's add something that looks like mm, this little sea urchin character right here. It has some nice variation on the edges. I'll select OK. But I also want to make the line width for this bigger, something more like 15. And the line color, I actually want to keep this in the blue range also. So I'll bring my color picker back up. Select the color and choose something down in the lower value areas and select OK. We can see this updating since the actual shape is active now. If I select off that, we can see that we have this kind of fuzzy line going around the outside. It looks like we have white hair, but we'll render this file out to see exactly what it looks like now. Keyboard shortcut Command-R on the Macintosh, Control-R on the PC. And there's our initial character. You know, you can create hair with scribbles if you want. You don't have to do solid fills. Sometimes fills are a little easier to manage, but it does have a different look. But for changing the actual style of the brush stroke, at this point, all you need to do is go in and select the shape, simply come over to Brushes, select a brush that you may want to try, in this case, a different natural pattern, select OK, and it's been updated. We can render this out, and it's got a little different look there. 
So these are all sorts of things as you create your character development or how you want to render it out in the animation program. These are some things to play with. Working with brushes is very, very easy to do. In our next movie, next two movies actually, we'll be looking at ways that we can start adding these styles and creating some stylistic looks a little more easily, but also saving those styles so we can reapply them consistently to other shapes during our animation.